challenges, issues, uh, large organization problems and scales. We also have a new situation facing job, facing job seekers. Um, the world in which they're looking for work now has completely changed in the last two, in the last two weeks. And finally, we have the self-employed. So those people that really do need to make sure that the revenue uh, channels are maintained. More relevant for today, perhaps, we're talking about um, digital education. And within that, we can definitely see that teachers and lecturers have to find new ways to work uh, while students are finding new ways to learn. And related to the students, um, and we're seeing a lot of this, uh, particularly here in, in, in Spain, is that the parents have a strong role to play here and for the parents they're facing many challenges. And finally, when we're talking about digital skills for all, we really want to focus in on the elderly and, and within the concept of digital inclusion. So I'll go into detail very, very briefly. I don't want to take much time, but we do want to just provide this context. So what we're seeing, and please later on when we're discussing, be happy to, to get some feedback on these. Teachers and lecturers now have to deliver online. And one of the main challenges that they're facing is actually they have a responsibility to ensure that learning and progress still continues, which, which provides many different challenges, but also how are they able to assess this fairly. The other thing that they have to deal with is that, and this is happening in each different region and each different, um, sorry, can someone mute though? Yes, thank you. Um, that they have to keep on responding to a really changing environment. It's very dynamic. Will the schools be open? Will they not be open? Will there be exams? Will there not be exams? And they have to face that uh, challenge. Students, um, especially for primary and secondary, more so for primary, self-directed learning is something that is new to them and that is going to have to be built upon in an online using digital resources and they'll have to learn how to submit material online. And maybe somewhere for a bit of concern is the amount of communication that's going to happen online now between teachers and peers. So how do they keep that in a, in a productive manner and, and maintain that? Parents now find themselves in a different environment where they have to, they are now responsible for the learning of their child, ensuring that they are progressing each day. Some of them in some countries, depending on the resources available, we are seeing that they are having to deliver homeschooling using their own resources or using provided resources. And this is all being uh, kept in the context of that they themselves have their own work to deliver. Talking about the elderly, uh, we definitely have issues where there is isolation from family members, where family members are unable due to the high risk scenario um, make physical visits. Another thing that we're seeing in terms of digital inclusion is that the latest information may not be on the radio, it's actually online. So that creates a potential barrier. And um, a lot of the elderly are finding their movements restricted uh, or that risks uh, are too high for them to go to the shops or to, to essential services that they require. That for other people, that might not be an issue because they can move on to a digital uh, scope. Moving into the labour force, looking at what new working environments that we are potentially seeing. Um, SME owners are now faced with having to move most of their activity into a remote function. That doesn't necessarily mean online. And they have to now manage the company, which means providing access to the, comp to the employees, the data that they need securely, but also they have to then um, return their accounts. They have to manage the, the legal returns that they have to do. All of that activity is now moved online for them. And especially when we're talking about retail and hospitality, um, they now have limited um, activities in certain areas and that creates challenges about stock, supply needs, and also how they're going to manage this uncertainty. Large organisations, of course, are also faced with similar scenarios, but much bigger scale, where they have to manage things online with much greater productivity. Um, they need to increase the access their employees have. You know, anecdotally, we hear scenarios where people aren't able to access their own, their own work. There is vast amounts of reassignment of human resources. And with that, again, we also have the, the management of those critical uh, workers who have to continue working, but how do we mitigate those, those risks that they have uh, facing the workers, but also facing the company. And again, as I said, I'll be brief, I'll be, I'll be quick on the last bit. So SME employees, especially, they have to now straddle different roles and they have to be confronted with brand new platforms they may have never used before. Um, the self-employed have to figure out how to deal with the uncertainty, but also what they can do with their lost revenue channels and the earnings. 
and their inability to continue. And as you mentioned, job seekers are in um, a different environment to what they were two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, it was a less competitive market and they were able to access still the facilities that provide them with the support for jobs and for training. So I hope that has been uh, at least of some interest. We were just trying to summarise and provide food for thought for the rest of the session and I really look forward to hearing from, from the presenters. So thank you very much, everyone. Brendan, thank you very much for uh, this very uh, good uh, introduction. I think it was exactly what we want to discuss today. And without further ado, I will give floor to Joseph from the Czech Digital uh, Coalition, who will now uh, start the, the part of this webinar where we will listen for, about, about the best practices and about the, the initiatives that are taking place all over Europe. And just before that, I, I also, we follow the chat, we see that you are posting about your initiatives. That's very good. Thank you very much. Uh, we, are, we are keeping an eye on this and we will, uh, let's, let's follow this up uh, at the end of the webinar, how to best uh, use all these initiatives that you are sharing and now yes we will, we will ask you to send them to to us the links i have for the ones that you have put in the chat this is annika here i am uh, taking them so uh, but otherwise you can also mail the links to us and we will publish them somehow on the website thank you and so if joseph is uh, yes, there, I'm, yes i'm ready and connected i hope you all hear me well Yes, so if you can share your Great. screen. So if I may share my screen right here. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so thank you, uh, Jakub, for the invitation and thank you for uh, uh, doing, this, uh, doing this webinar. I think it's uh, very uh, nice and important to share uh, a good practice in, this, in these times. So I would like to present the initiatives or uh, the activities that uh, uh, the Czech uh, National uh, Coalition for Digital Jobs is doing, or as we call it, DigiCoalitza, and how we are dealing with COVID-19. Uh, uh, here are some general information about our DigiCoalitza, which I will just go through very briefly. What is important uh, here is to say that we are an open platform of, uh, of uh, uh, the stakeholders. So basically anyone can join our uh, our coalition and uh, currently we are uniting over 200 members uh, and um, what we do or what, what we are try what we are doing right from the beginning is uh, supporting the PPP principles which means the connecting the private uh, or building the private public partnership uh, the major goals in 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 uh, Czech Republic for the equal is, is to connect to inspire and to support uh, the, uh, the improvement of uh, the digital uh, digital education, and uh, we are trying to uh, bring the uh, the experts, uh, the organizations, teachers, headmasters, students, and and other uh, stakeholders uh, to one table and to uh, to share their good practice and to share uh, to, to basically provide them a platform to meet and to hear from each other. Uh, and uh, now concretely how we are dealing with the COVID-19, uh, the current situation, uh, we uh, are taking it also, uh, al although it's, it's very bad and I hope that you are all safe and sound, uh, we take these uh, times of crisis as, as an opportunity, an opportunity to show the possibilities of online or distance uh, education uh, to aggregate the examples of good practice, uh, to promote the activities of DigiCoalitza, because we are uh, also uh, uh, kind of getting uh, an information that uh, some uh, some companies or some stakeholders would like to. Uh, they, they are basically searching for a platform uh, such as DigiCoalitza. They don't know much uh, about us, or they don't have enough information about us. So we are trying to promote uh, what we are doing. Uh, and uh, we are trying to coordinate uh, better the communication of the digital education uh, with the Ministry of Education and also with the, with the relevant stakeholders. And uh, we are trying to actively, or not we are trying, we, we are doing it. Uh, we are actively communicating towards headmasters, teachers, companies, our members, and of course, the and with the Ministry of Education. Uh, what we do uh, concretely, uh, we, 
show the schools the possibility to teach and study online, uh, we uh, kind of think, uh, or the, the practice uh, of ours is that the problem sometimes is the excessive offer, uh, and it, it, it's sometimes very hard to uh, to find uh, trustworthy channels to uh, not only teach but also to study uh, online. And uh, so we are trying to aggregate the uh, the current possibilities uh, in this in this manner. Uh, we share these offers. Uh, we are. Uh, of not, not only of products, but also of, of trainings uh, and not only of our members. We are not uh, trying to discriminate in these times uh, or to focus only on our members, but also uh, on, on our non-members. And we encourage uh, these stakeholders to join Digi College Set to work with us uh, on promoting the digital education, not only in, the in these times of crisis, but also uh, afterwards. Uh, we all do this through our uh, social media channels such as Facebook, uh, Twitter, and the website, uh, website where we uh, have uh, the special, uh, special, where we are writing these special articles, uh, articles on uh, online education. Uh, we uh, currently we have uh, one only, but we are preparing uh, many, many more because we are uh, right now aggregating all. Uh, the, the possibilities and all the offers uh, that is coming to us. And of course, uh, we are trying to communicate directly with the, with the stakeholders. Uh, what, uh, I, I mean, the, the major contribution of DigiCollets uh, was, or the, the way, uh, or the reason why the DigiCollets uh, was able to react so quickly was because of the, uh, because of its wide base and uh, uh, our, uh, and that's why uh, our com communication is built on our existing portfolio of members uh, and uh, thanks to our wide platform we were able to or we are still able to connect directly with companies such as Microsoft, uh, Chiquitas or Alza uh, which are uh, among the among the uh, leading leading experts in uh, in the field of uh, digital digital education uh, and we are trying to communicate the offers uh, the uh, offers of products through our channels and invite them to join DigiCollets, as I already said, or as I already mentioned. And besides the offers of certain products, uh, the companies also contact us to share uh, their good practice, which uh, we also share through our website. So not only, uh, we are not only active on our blog or via our blog, but also we are uh, a special section that focuses on uh, the, uh, the examples of good practice. And uh, we are cooperating, as I, as I already mentioned, we are, there is a close cooperation with the Ministry of Education. Uh, we are social media, where we are using the similar hashtags and we are trying to share each other's contents and support uh, each other's webinars, for example. And uh, basically the, the, the goal behind that uh, is to be comprehensible and united in communication towards teachers, headmasters, students, or, or public and, of course, uh, also towards uh, the, uh, the stakeholders. So right now, I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope I didn't uh, excess my, my, uh, my time for the presentation. And I'm really uh, looking forward to hear from your uh, good practice in these times of crisis and uh, to share uh, or, or basically to, to uh, looking forward for the, for the discussion. So thank you. Joseph, thank you very much for keeping really the time and thank you for a, a very interesting presentation. Uh, uh, I think the, the cooperation with the ministry is indeed uh, uh, a very good uh, practice. Uh, Annika, you are following together with me the chat. Do we have any, I don't, I don't see really a question per se. No, I don't see any questions. There are a lot of uh, people are posting examples. So from uh, Latvia, Malta, Denmark, Greece, there are examples in the, in the chat. Uh, I might have missed some that all seem very interesting. And we will share these best practices afterwards together with all the presentations. Afterwards. Yes, thank you very much. If you have questions, please uh, post them in the chat and then we will ask them on your behalf. Once more, thanks to Josef. And uh, I suggest we move on to the other presentation, which is Alessandro Boliolo, who is the EU Codewick Ambassador Coordinator. 
um, from Italy, currently being also in Italy. Uh, so Alessandro, I hope you are doing well and fine and, and you are healthy and uh, and we are very much looking forward to hearing what the new Code Week community is doing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so first of all, I'm uh, fine. Thank you. And uh, we are we have experienced lockdown for uh, about one month now, and we don't know when uh, the strict requirements will be relaxed. So we are uh, basically relying on uh, digital technologies very much, uh, as uh, most of uh, Europe uh, is doing. So first of all, uh, infrastructures are, uh, I would say, uh, quite uh, resilient in the sense that they, they are uh, supporting the incredible increase in usage and uh, especially in business hours. And uh, so far, uh, there are very good practices uh, around uh, both in schools and universities, in education in particular, and uh, a lot of uh, attempt of coordination from the Ministry of Education. So the Ministry of Education, since the very beginning, uh, has um, launched uh, uh, calls for uh, digital solidarity by um, asking uh, universities, uh, content owners, uh, uh, platform managers, uh, and uh, technology vendors uh, to offer uh, free services uh, and contents uh, to schools. Uh, and those contents uh, are very uh, well um, accessible and organized uh, in uh, a website uh, directly built by the Ministry of Education. Um, I'd like also to mention that there are uh, very diverse situations in Italy in uh, universities and schools uh, and uh, there are uh, especially universities uh, which are very well equipped and in particular the ones uh, that um, are uh, uh, delivering uh, teaching uh, as uh, when nothing uh, had happened uh, are the ones that made uh, usage of blended learning. So they had already their system set up and they switched smoothly from blended learning to e-learning and distance learning uh, as it would. And uh, then there are uh, schools that uh, were uh, well prepared, other ones that were just uh, ready, uh, especially because of uh, teacher training uh, and the professional development uh, that uh, was uh, um, already uh, delivered uh, in the last years and there are uh, some that are not prepared at all so there are there is a very diverse situation um, i'd like also to mention that uh, uh, in any case uh, teachers are playing an incredible role which is uh, uh, not only for uh, trying to do their best uh, in order to keep uh, teaching uh, but also for uh, the social role that they uh, are still playing uh, and they are working uh, much harder than uh, when the schools are open because uh, distance learning uh, requires uh, some preparation, some adaptation of contents uh, and uh, also has uh, basically no hours, and no school hours. So they are really working uh, full day. Not all of them, of course, uh, as usual, um, as for uh, coding, uh, we found out that coding is uh, a very um, switched uh, topic uh, and method and tool in order to uh, create a connection between schools, families, pupils, just because of the intuitive and rewarding nature and engaging nature. So uh, in uh, all three situations of so schools very well equipped that uh, switch to distance learning, schools with very prepared teachers and schools that were not uh, prepared at all, uh, in all these situations uh, coding provide uh, a very good way of uh, keeping uh, uh, people in contact with each other and engaging in some common activity which is very rewarding. Um, I have also uh, general tips from the experience, from the Italian experience. So the first one is that uh, in case 
a school uh, has to um, cope with an emergency without being uh, so well prepared. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is uh, to have accounts ready and some platform, regardless of the um, readiness of the platform, robustness of the platform, if you have a platform where you have uh, accounts uh, and possibly accounts grouped by uh, classrooms uh, or school years uh, and teachers, uh, then this provides an incredible uh, basis uh, to leverage on uh, in order to build uh, something on top of it, uh, possibly relying, and this is another tip, uh, on uh, cloud resources. Both platforms uh, and contents uh, have to be exploited as much as possible in cloud in order not uh, to, um, to encounter any bottleneck uh, based on uh, solutions set up on your own premises. Then uh, I'd like also to mention that uh, it is very important not to overload families, uh, pupils, uh, students in general, because the risk is that uh, where uh, uh, school activities are not very well organized, uh, every teacher try to do their best to uh, keep in contact with pupils and students, uh, which is very good, but also to try to keep them uh, engaged and involved. But sometimes uh, they overlap. And this overlap creates a lot of confusion and also a lot of stress on families and students. And in order to avoid this kind of stress, it is, it is um, in my opinion, um, appropriate to try to respect as much as possible uh, the, the schedule of the school classes. So, uh, possibly reducing uh, the presence rather than uh, uh, extending uh, the, the time of online uh, synchronous presence uh, with respect to school hours because it's more uh, uh, intense uh, uh, distance learning than uh, uh, teaching uh, the presence. Um, on the other hand, keeping in touch with students and pupils is very, very important, uh, as I mentioned, for the social role that uh, teachers uh, play. And um, among the resources that are already available online that I suggested to exploit as much as possible, there are, of course, the ones uh, offered by Europe Code Week. So Europe Code Week is a portal uh, that uh, is uh, well known by many, many teachers. There are ambassadors in every country that can play a role uh, and there are uh, EDU coordinators that can engage teachers uh, in their countries in order to try to exploit as much as possible existing resources and also the methodologies that uh, Europe Code Week uh, is uh, introducing uh, in schools. So uh, this is an incredible uh, opportunity also of boosting uh, digital skills. And uh, where um, digital uh, tools, uh, technologies, and even skills uh, were perceived as something uh, uh, virtual and possibly uh, quite far from reality, now we are experiencing a situation uh, in which uh, digital uh, means uh, real. So this is something uh, possibly to exploit uh, and uh, to take away from this uh, incredible and sad situation. So thank you very much. Um, Aless Alessandro, we have a question from uh, Jasik. Um, he's saying that using smartphones in the classrooms is quite controversial among teachers in Poland. So maybe you could share how it works in Italy. Uh, what is controversial? Sorry, I... The use of smartphones in uh, classrooms. Yeah, yeah you know, um, in Italy we, we were debating on that uh, as well. But right now, I think that we have no more classrooms. So <laughs> we need to use digital technologies or otherwise we have nothing. So uh, this is why I'm uh, saying that uh, where there is a lockdown, like in Italy at this time, uh, digital technologies uh, have been boosted a lot, uh, just because uh, all these kind of concerns uh, are uh, not uh, the first priority, the top priority. 
And uh, if you remove these concerns just because uh, you need to use uh, technology, it's not a choice, uh, then you find out uh, also how useful they could be. And when uh, pupils uh, and uh, students of any age uh, are uh, uh, need actually to use uh, their own smartphones or personal computers or tablets uh, for teaching, uh, they probably end up uh, using it less uh, for many other stuff uh, than they were used to do before. So at the moment, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, what is uh, digital has become a, a real tool for doing real stuff in real life and not just something for distracting ourselves from reality. Thank you. Alessandro, thank you very much uh, for, you. for this uh, contribution. I mean, I heard for the second time today the word opportunity. Uh, both from Joseph and both also from you. So I think this is something that uh, that maybe is a kind of a red line that uh, in this uh, difficult situation we, we should think about. Sorry, it. if I can, I, I'd like also to share another piece of information that we yes. are also developing uh, an open technology for uh, um, virus containment. And I'd like to share uh, Please uh, stop me if this is not appropriate, but speaking about digital skills and, and uh, as in this case, uh, and jobs, I think that uh, it is very appropriate to try to put together our competencies in order to develop something open and free that can be used also as a technology. So uh, I, I'll share with you a link and in case uh, you think it's appropriate, uh, I will uh, be glad uh, if you can if you can uh, share it also with the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alessandro. And uh, let us move to the next presentation so that we keep the schedule. Uh, so far, we are OK. So I will quickly share with you the agenda. Now we will have Lydia Kraili, uh, sorry for the pronunciation, uh, from the Croatian Digital Coalition, uh, who will uh, tell us uh, what their coalition is doing uh, to address uh, this, this difficult situation. Okay, um, hello everyone. May I share my screen? Yes, you can share, thank you. Okay. Is it visible now? Uh, one second. And now it is, thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, hello everyone. Uh, greetings from Croatia in this quite challenging time, but I think uh, it is really opportunities uh, for our, all us, uh, as, as colleagues from Italy says uh, as well. Just a few slides and illustration how it looks like in our schools today, or our homes uh, today. So Croatia have 1300 schools, almost half a million of students and more than 60,000 of teachers. Uh, we, uh, coordinated from the ministries of science and education together with the digital uh, national coalition and different stakeholders in Croatia, uh, our agencies for education, for our networks, and try to uh, coordinate and collaborate with all to have extensive measures delivered to all our students and uh, teachers. So when we see that schools are closing in our neighborhood in Italy, we started uh, preparation, heavily preparation, uh, writing guidelines, handbooks, um, different tutorials, preparing digital tools, planning organizational scheme in case we close one, one school or one county or uh, several, several schools. Soon we realized that if we close one or more schools, we have a similar need for a video lessons and for the broadcast for our students. So in a, in a matter of days, we start recording video lessons uh, for students age 18, uh, 11 to 18 and for younger students prepare broadcast on a national uh, TV. So uh, as organization for our schools, uh, we um, told, our principals to organize virtual classroom uh, for all um, principals. It's led by our ministry. Every school has to organize virtual staff room in their school and every class teacher have to organize virtual classroom for their uh, students and class uh, teachers uh, and subject teachers as well. 
For younger students, the class teacher uh, was responsible to organize, organize way of communication uh, with parents, um, either via email or any messaging app so they could easily communicate. And in a matter of days, all our schools create those uh, virtual staff rooms and classrooms. So we have a quite huge number of virtual classrooms uh, today. Uh, to provide and ensure that everything went almost smoothly, uh, we organized support from different agencies and on a different levels. So we have a virtual classroom where ministry is directly supporting principals. We have virtual classroom for subject teachers, let's say mathematics, physics, creational language, where our mentors are giving advices and um, answering questions from our colleagues from the school. We ensured several ways of sharing information, either from a web page and also almost 24 hours per day uh, help desk from CARNET and from the ministry. Uh, I am very happy to say that all our telecommunication companies provided support, ensured uh, free broadband to primary and secondary students, almost all students in primary school, and uh, those with low level of social economic status in secondary schools. Also textbook publishers and um, uh, education technology apps publishers provide free access to all students. We uh, established national plan so all the schools in this distance learning follow the same plan and we are providing lessons for all the students from the age 7 to the age 18. So the basic set is available to all students they could follow it quite easily and it is a support from the ministry side. Of course teachers who, are, uh, who have better digital competencies can provide additional uh, work, uh, additional tasks or, or lessons. The burden is on our mentors team be because they have to deliver 300 lessons per week and almost 25 hours uh, for the TV broadcasting. We are creating everything from a scratch and this is our TV teacher. Uh, we also have a sign language uh, translator available and this is some slides from the license for the uh, older students. This is mathematics, of course. Uh, backup, backup, backup. Uh, we are all depending on the internet, but we are providing several channels for the sharing of the information and the lessons. So TV channels, several of them, web pages, several of them, YouTube channels for our school for life and for the uh, school on a third, mail, messaging apps, and of course, social apps. Um, we are happy to have um, national authentication for all students and teachers set up almost 15 years ago. It, can, it came really handy in these days. So with this national authentication, different platforms were accessible and available for all students and uh, teachers. We decided to go with the several different platforms because we had to distribute the load. Uh, in a previous month, we had typically, at the most, maximum 100 access to our AI in a minute. Now we have 1,100. So you see it's a, it's a huge number and our servers are really struggling with that. So just strolling through our um, staff room, our classroom, so you could see visibly how it looks like, how our teachers and principals really give their best to organize work for their students and colleagues and share all the resources and support students in this uh, difficult time. Uh, we are quite happy that we are building on the basic of the comprehensive curriculum reform as well as eSchools project. So we are well, basically uh, two years in the reform. Uh, we established strong online community for the teachers uh, giving them uh, blended learning uh, through our virtual classroom and uh, as a part of face-to-face -face training. Also in eSchools, uh, development of digital skills happened from 2015. It came really handy these days. 
Uh, we were happy also that we uh, use EU funds in our government budget to buy equipment for the schools, for the teachers, for the students. So plenty of equipment were available in our schools in this difficult time. So each of our primary school students have tablet to take it back home. Each of our teachers have a laptop to take it back home and work as a part of a distance uh, learning today. Um, mentor teams are in place from 2017 and it really helped us when we, in a matter of hours, had to create and deliver uh, 300 video lessons uh, per week. Okay, we really jumped. It was short time. Um, so in a matter of days, we were from 18, 19 centuries to the 22nd centuries. Um, we support schools the best as they could. Uh, our teachers, our parents and students are doing their best, but we really now have a distance learning for the whole education system uh, in Croatia. Uh, we use different platforms and you can see we have almost close to the 50,000 virtual classroom uh, today. Challenges on a different level, a different limitation. We were not prepared. We didn't expect this coming, but in a matter of a week, we settled all technological resources and all human potential and resources to make it happen uh, in creation. Challenges, I think, are the similar uh, in all countries. Lack of teaching materials, short time or no time for creation, and we have to support the whole system. So it's not, not just one school, it's all of them at the same time. Um, Croatia was not lucky to have earthquake in a, this time, but we were happy that we were building digital skills from 2015, that we have around 300 mentors available on call, on demand, to create resources. We have equipment and that we uh, establish several platforms uh, in Croatia. We work together also with the European School Net on the webinars sharing good practices from the side of the Ministry of Science and Education, but also working with all parties in digital coalition, um, either from a private sector, either from the agency. So they are sharing their learning resources with us. I think that from this day, education will never be the same. You can't go backwards when you're talking about digital competences. Education is taking the similar measures and in, in, in a private company. So keep continuous improvement and changing and being ready to answer the needs uh, of everybody as a part of the system. So here are a few links for uh, our websites and the YouTube channels. I will copy it in the chat. Thank you. Lydia, th thank you very much. Sorry, Annika. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, we have one question uh, about how the, the Croatian Digital Coalition was involved in the national education program online education program? Um, Ministry of Science and Education invited all stakeholders, so either small or bigger, either companies or, or agencies, uh, to help us support, uh, either with sharing those uh, their uh, resources as a guidelines and the handbooks uh, available for the teachers or uh, adjusted to be implemented with the teachers uh, and with the students and also to share their uh, learning resources. Some of our uh, partners in Digital Coalition already have some uh, video lessons recorded in a previous time. And so they share it with the ministry and we made it available to the old schools and, and teachers and students. Thank you. Thank you. Lydia, thank you once more. Really impressive numbers and impressive achievements. So congratulations. And I, I, we also see in the chat that so many other countries are doing uh, impressive and, and outstanding effort and, and have uh, are already reporting very, very good results. So thank you very much for that. Please keep You're posting. welcome. Thank you. And please keep posting your, uh, your links or your achievements in the chat. Let's discuss uh, very shortly then how we can best use it and, and, and scale it up. But before that, I would also like to invite now our, our last speaker, who is Tony Skusmin.
from Estonia, who is a founder and CEO of 99 Bath. Uh, so it's a startup in educational technology, and uh, they um, did uh, a pretty impressive um, a collaboration between startups and uh, to and offered their resources and their services not only to Estonian kids and, and teachers but also to to the rest of the world but I now give the floor to Tonis who will tell us more. Thank you very much Jakub, uh, thanks for having me. Hello everyone. So we indeed uh, managed to pull off uh, a private public partnership within two days and that included a uh, weekend. Uh, from when the news came out that we are going to close the schools in Estonia. Uh, we also decided to share all the, all the learning platforms that we have for uh, outside Estonia. And Jakub invited me to share this story. Uh, so hopefully it's, it's helpful for uh, many countries. Um, when I first heard the news that all close will be uh, closed when the news came out from the minister, ministry, then I immediately, it was uh, 11 p.m., uh, almost midnight, I immediately went to work and called uh, up my colleagues and we pulled an old nighter. Um, so we started with preparing our own solution, 99 Math, for remote learning and started preparing the communication. Um, but we realized that uh, there are so many other solutions and we should act fast with them as well. So in the morning, I started calling these solutions uh, and combining a website uh, of, of uh, cooperation support offering. And I asked four specific questions from them. Uh, is your solution um, supporting uh, remote or home learning? Uh, secondly, is it very, uh, is it an instant setup? Because now when teachers need to adjust and parents need to adjust, they don't have a lot of time to learn new solutions or go through implementation process. Uh, so is it easy to set up? then for what exactly this can be used uh, how can you support either the curriculum continuation in distance learning or um, the organization management side for example handling the schools but now online um, and the fourth question was how can you support um, this situation many of them provided their solutions for free almost all of them um, some of them started organizing online webinars to train people to adopt products fast. Now, I'm gonna share the screen and show you a bit more insight into that initiative. So the next day we, we were lucky enough to have the, that was on Friday, Friday afternoon, we were lucky enough to have the uh, meeting with, with ministry, including the minister, uh, education minister of uh, education in Estonia. And uh, we, uh, we planned the meeting in advance, but we were just lucky to be there at, at that day. Uh, and uh, then we agreed that uh, the ministry is going to support that initiative. And we worked over the weekend, including the public sector employees actually, uh, worked during the weekend. So we had everything prepared and we, we launched it uh, in the weekend and in, also as an international news uh, on Monday morning. Why did we do that is because we realized that Estonia has been lucky enough to, to become um, advanced in, in um, e-solutions, e including e-learning solutions. And we thought that we have things and we have solutions and we have know-how to share with the world and we should not keep this for ourselves, but get this uh, out as fast as possible. So we had this, uh, this initiative and soon enough, we, uh, since my partner has started a Nordic uh, education forum, Nordic EdTech forum, then we were able to invite Nordic companies and, and within a few days, we had 45 uh, solutions in the platform um, offering their, um, their services for free now in that situation. Um, some of these uh, solutions, for example, um, 99Math, uh, the company that I'm running, is made to bring social, uh, social activity to, the, um, to math. So kids compete in math with their peers and compare scores. Or, or Dream Apply, for example, is a solution for, um, for high, uh, higher education, for student admissions and they help with marketing as well. And the challenge there seems to be that many universities have, 
have declared that they're not taking in international applicants uh, this year. And uh, the ones uh, who continue with that uh, can still grow the youth num numbers, um, the student numbers, the admission, and the situation will hopefully solve uh, by the fall. Now, in addition to, to many, um, many of the uh, solutions like virtual teachers room, which is uh, made for schools to organize the, the teachers self development search. Now that needs to happen very fast. Um, we are also doing these live webinars. For example, we are organizing one tomorrow. Um, now I'm talking international webinars. Um, the topic tomorrow will be with a peculiar name, with uh, the finest way uh, of learning at home. Uh, the name comes from actually because we're doing this with Finland. So Finland and Estonia are putting uh, their knowledge together to share experience with the world. Now, we have managed to to pull together uh, a team of seven working on this uh, and um, they're all doing it for the cause. No one is getting paid for it. Um, I'm leading the team of seven, but in, in total, I, I have counted about 30 people have, uh, have supported this and have put work in to, to help organize something, webinars or like that. We are also currently in calls with United, United Nations and uh, European Schoolnet and, and many other international partners trying to figure out how to get solutions uh, to the people who need it. United Nations has said that there are about 800 million students that are affected uh, because of this school closures um, and because of the huge load for their parents who now have to manage working from home and teaching their kids at the same time, we hope to uh, ease their pressure and bring even more uh, solutions solutions to the platform, um, make it available for free if possible, and support with webinars. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I, I see that uh, your initiative has grown since I first time saw it, because in the beginning it was around, I think, 12 or 15 startups, right, from Estonia, but now it's the, it's the whole Nordic, right? Yes, that's, exa that's exactly the way it, uh, it went. We released the Estonian um, solutions at, at first. And then since my partner is a founder of that Nordic EdTech Forum, we were able to get in contact with all of these companies and get them on board immediately. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I posted the link also to the chat. Now we are, uh, thank you to all presenters. We are at the end of the part where we were presenting and we, we had the, uh, the presentations from, from different parts of Europe. I think to sum up, uh, the good news is that there are so many uh, really good, interesting and inspiring initiatives. And uh, I guess now it's time to, to discuss a bit and to think how to leverage that. But maybe I will let Fabrizia again to, to uh, give her first feedback or first reactions. Fabrizia, if you are there. Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes. Can, can you hear me? yes, we can hear you. Yes, thanks. I can even go on video if you can. If you can. Hear Very me. good. So, uh, first of all, all of this is extremely impressive, and uh, you know, with with every intervention, I kept on saying, if only our platform was up. You, 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 most of you know that we are working on a platform exactly to do this on the one hand to allow national coalitions to uh, uh, to exchange like we're doing now and to learn from each other but also to have a public site where we can post uh, the initiatives on trainings on uh, funding opportunities on best practices on certification so in a sense we are uh, facing with a situation where we must deliver this without having the structure online, uh, up, up, you know, up and running, because we are running the course. Some coalitions have already 
um, gone through that first selection. Others will go again in June through the same selection to receive funding. And we are also working on a, the ERCOR platform. Now, this will be, uh, you know, set up by, I would say, uh, September. And it won't be too soon. But in the meantime, I think what we have to do is to make sure that each of the examples that we saw today are not, um, it's not a one-off. So what I would suggest is that you send your input to the Secretariat and I ask Brendan to compile it, subdivided it per targets, so that we can look to post it in the Coalition website, in the Commission website, and then this is the first step. Second step, we can select and see what, um, uh, what initiatives we can upscale, we can support with funds. Uh, and, uh, and thirdly, and this is something that, you know, I'm just uh, reacting instantly, but I would like to be able to set up a hotline, an email address where people that have difficulties with digital skills, I have a problem, can ask us and we can try within our network, and our network is actually wider than the people that have kindly agreed to meet with us today in this form, uh, to find an example of something that is working and that can be useful for them. Um, so these are my three uh, proposals. Um, one reflection, we uh, were concentrating today on education, on schools, on homeschooling, on distance learning, and that is very good. But there is another section of the economy that is desperate to have help, and those are the SMEs who, uh, that are not linked in big organizations. Brendan, when he made the presentation of the uh, problem definition at the beginning, he did signal um, uh, this this particular target group. So I would uh, also like to um, ask that we reach out to you and try to see if we can see through your experiences in this area as well. And I would very much like now to give the floor to you so that I listen to your reactions to my my proposal. So perhaps you can put your hand up uh, if you want to say something, see if that works. Otherwise you turn on. You can also uh, unmute yourself and, uh, yeah. and start speaking if we don't have the crowds who start that, then we can manage. Saskia is the first one. <laughs> sorry, sorry, because I have to leave uh, to go to another call. I just wanted to point out um, something which I've put in the chat. Um, it's very good to have all software, but we still have people not having the necessarily PCs. So I just shared the initiative, which is international, by the way, of Close the Gap, uh, which is a completely circular, circular economy uh, organization um, taking over old PCs from organizations, making them fully ready and dispatching them for the different uh, categories who need. So that can be children. We do a lot in elder houses uh, today. Um, and and um, I think that's also one of the missing uh, chains in the, um, in, in the solution. Now to answer to your question on uh, setting up a help desk, I would love to, but you just need to be sure yeah. that you can answer those people also. Um, we have some help desks already running, and it's extremely um, uh, people people consuming. Yeah. Um, and most of the help desks are already doing something else. Yeah. So it's just, it's a good idea. I'm just doubting uh, a little bit uh, on uh, the possibility to realize. Yeah. Yeah, Saskia, thank you very much uh, for these contributions. Uh, and thanks, and uh, enjoy the, the next call. Uh, in case we have any, any we have other... Uh, we have Loretta putting up her hand from mm -hmm. Lithuania. You know... Hello from Lithuania. Hello to all. You know, I have a question regarding, you know, what has been previously said regarding our good examples. 
The problem is, you know, that everything we prepare is on is in Lithuanian language. So I am a little bit hesitating. How would you like to see how we are doing, you know, with all these, you know, changes in this Corona period? Uh, so sorry. Yes. So um, you're saying that you you have uh, the, the the website and everything in Lithuania, and you would like to show it uh, quickly now. No, this is not. You know the website actually. Yes, we have the website. We have different projects. You know different ideas, but not in one place. So my question is, you know. Uh, would you like to see, you know, everything, you know, like managed from by national coalition gathered in one place, you know, what's done in the country? I think, I think what we are looking at, at, at the European level, I will start with the European level, we, we are looking at the, uh, the place where we have all the relevant initiatives that can be replicated, that can be used by others. That we have them published at one place and as Fabrizia mentioned ideally in few months this would be the platform which would also by the way deal with the the whole platform system will also deal with the translation issue because there is uh, uh, there are actions and budget for translation so this would be also a big help but uh, until we have the platform on and running uh, we believe that we can still showcase the, the initiative so if you if you would write down um, what you are doing in English, of course, and, and as Fabrizia said, send it to the secretariat, that will be already your first step. And second, Sorry, Jakub, just interrupt there. Our, our yes. partners and secretariat are from Vilnius, so in Lithuania we can handle as well. Okay, thank you. And the, the thank email you. to the secretariat is in the chat, digitalskills at bluespecs.com. I can post it again. Great, thanks Annika. And one, one last thing that I also observed by other coalitions, I remember that it was in Malta, I think in the Czech Republic I saw it as well, uh, some other coalitions, they created on their website uh, a special page which uh, sum up, summed up all the initiatives, uh, all their national initiatives that they are involved, that they are supporting, um, and basically, a, a person who visits your website then has an overview uh, of what you are doing or in which initiatives you are involved in uh, in relation to this COVID uh, situation. So that could be also for your national uh, level an option for, for communication so, so that uh, people who visit your website can learn much faster what, uh, what you are doing and what are the useful links and what resources they can use and, and, and all these practicalities at one place. Uh, and uh, also we are, I think Aris has uh, asked also in the chat, uh, initiatives to support SMEs and uh, elderly. So if you have such examples, please share them with us as well, because we're also interested in that. Jakub. Yes, thank you. I think if we if we have other people to who want to contribute, who want to give their feedback, don't hesitate. Hello. Uh, can I can I join in? A bit yes, I see Lucia. Yes, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, well, um, we know that we can reach the people and schools in our uh, in our case um, that are online but uh, how to reach the the ones that are not online we had uh, uh, we initiated and cooperated with the national television to uh, to make a special tv tv lessons which we are not the only ones uh, in croatia and in other countries they are doing the same but uh, still it's not sufficient so and the, the pupils and students have to work on their laptop on, or on their their um, tablet but if they for example don't even have uh, wi-fi at home or have just one uh, computer for free kids how to reach them uh, we are really struggling with that issue and i would be really happy to see your 
to hear your views on that. Thank you. Uh, at the yes. webinar, sorry, at the webinar we, we had with EU Code Week teachers, um, Friday or Tuesday, there were a couple of teachers who were sharing how they worked uh, offline, that using the mobile phones, even landlines, and actually sending papers uh, are the ways teachers are working. And using and using the the TV broadcasting, I think this yeah. is something that I mean, Lucy, I mentioned it. It was in the Croatian presentation. Uh, I think the the in general TV or radio can play uh, an important role nowadays, right? But I also want to invite if anyone else wants to react on that because I guess this might be an issue not only not only a minor issue in one country. I think many of you are facing this this uh, issue of how to reach kids and, and teachers who are not fully online or not at all online. If I may... Mario raising your hand. Yes, please, Mario. Uh, thank you. Uh, we are in close discussion with activities from uh, teachers and also with the Ministry of Education. But what we see uh, that the teachers they send to other teachers a huge amount of offers which digital communication tools they can use. And now most of the teachers are lost in space because you have maybe 20 different tools you can use, but from our point of view, maybe only three or four are those who are really appropriate and good for kids for using the video with kids and so on. So we see that we have to act not about not much about the content because there is a lot of content but i think we should care and help teachers to use the right communication digital tools because using viber or skype or this kind of communication we see not as appropriate for kids thank you thank you mario for this contribution uh, indeed, I think very relevant one. Um, is there anyone else who wants to react on uh, this unplugged offline activities or how to how to reach people who are not connected to the internet or who wants to share anyone else who wants to share? Tonis, yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question for, uh, I guess, all the participants yeah, that uh, Many of the challenges that teachers and parents are facing are, are very similar uh, from country to country. Um, for some of the teachers that are te uh, technologically well prepared, they find it, the situation easier. But for many teachers, the, the challenges are very much the same. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm wondering, is it possible somehow to cooperate on, on a very large scale to uh, to organize some some very practical uh, webinars, uh, like trainings for teachers. Um, the language barrier, of course, is there. Um, possibly organize it in English and then translate it to other languages. And to kind of give, I guess, two things. One as very specific advice, uh, how to act in this situation. And secondly, also very specific tools, whatever they may be, for example, would it be Google Classroom or Microsoft Education or, or what have you. But so they would know and could react uh, immediately taking advantage of these tools that are right there to use. Thank you. Yes. Tonis, thank you. And I see Mark Durando has uh, raised his hand, so Mark, you can unmute. Yes, yes, many thanks. Uh, now, I, I really think it's important to to realize that in uh, in three weeks, we are changing the complete paradigm and the complete disruptive um, uh, thinking on the use of technology within teaching in classrooms. So, which means we have done most in three weeks than we have done in the last thirty years. And that's the paradigm we are facing now. And uh, all ministries, uh, I'm representing the network of 34 ministries of education. And um, all our ministries, we are working with our ministries currently on uh, 
particular webinars to share that experience, but we are facing a, a lot of issues and uh, how are we going to organize the examinations at the end of June? Should the examination be online? What will be the consequence? So there are a lot of issues and impact as well, not only organizing teaching online and supporting teachers. We have to take care also on special needs children. How are we going to deal with special needs children? Uh, so they are not uh, penalized by this particular situation. Uh, and also we also have to prepare teachers because uh, quite a lot of teachers are not prepared at all. So that's, I, I agree there could be issues of equipment, there could be issues of technology, but also what is important that uh, uh, teachers can't replicate what they did face to face online. So re replicating a teaching lesson online will never attract the student. So which means all the innovative pedagogy, pedagogical methods have to be shared now. So that's what we are trying by sharing videos made by some teachers which are quite advanced. And of course, we, we are more than trying to support everybody in this particular period. Mark, thank you very much for this contribution. Uh, I see that people are also sharing their comments in the chat, very good, thank you. There's uh, also another person from Greece who wants to speak. Is it Vasiliki, you? Yes, it's yes, me. Thank you. <laughs> it's me, thank you. Um, thank you once again, uh, all of you for sharing all these ideas and initiatives. It's quite useful for us because we just took over the coordination of uh, the Greek coalition. So it's quite useful to have uh, this webinar sharing this idea. Um, uh, I think uh, what it's a good opportunity, uh, given the situation, also to see uh, we have a lot of materials, uh, we have a lot of uh, online courses, but we need to see how much we manage to engage learners at home. I mean, having all this material available and uh, all this video is one thing. The other thing we need to uh, see uh, is how much we manage to engage teachers and maybe we need to establish a feedback mechanism to see how all these things work. Uh, so for us to see what else we need to plan or to take care because uh, we are facing now a critical situation but we never know how the future will uh, um, how it will end up in the future so we need to prepare ourselves and make things work better uh, so i was just thinking how if we we can uh, develop such mechanism or a questionnaire or if already some countries have developed and have already feedback and comments from teachers and students using uh, all these tools so they can share with us thank you Thank you, Vasiliki, for this, uh, for also this contribution. If anyone wants to reply to that question, request, demand, uh, feel free to Hello. unmute. Yes, Karma, I, I see. Yes, hi. I, I want to. Yes. yes, I I want to suggest, uh, let's say, um, uh, one of the uh, initiatives that countries can do is, uh, you know, some people talked about. Um, the outreach, you know, people that cannot be reached. Um, I think uh, television is, uh, is 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 very much more widely used than the usual digital platform. So uh, I'm sure that in these times, uh, a number of telecoms uh, companies are opening their hands and maybe uh, nationally, uh, you know, a stakeholder can agree with, with, with one of these or some of these telecoms providers to uh, create one of the, you know, usually they have a lot of channels, a lot of them are not used, to create one of those channels for, you know, uh, to be online all the time, or online I mean on TV, with different times uh, to different targets, you know. Uh, and, and that could be a bigger outreach. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Carm, also for this contribution from Malta. Uh, I, because we are now 17 minutes over the time, but I think this debate is useful. And, and I do very much appreciate all the comments and all the suggestions, either that you do orally or that you post in the chat. And just a reminder, please write it down, sum it up, send it to the, to the secretariat, and then, uh, then this will be a ground for us to move forward and to also provide this, uh, this European dimension and the European value of, and the value of our cooperation. If there is no one else who wants to add, reply, or comment, I would still check with uh, Fabrizia if she wants Fabrizia, some last words, but I saw that you posted in the chat as well. Uh, yes, um, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Jakob. I'm, I'm trying to uh, put the video on, but again, it's failing me. Um, I hope you can hear me. My uh, take would be that once we have the material from you, um, with the Secretariat and we have a view of what is there and how is it that we can organize it, we will revert to you and tell you what is the next step. I hope that we will be able to do another webinar um, of this type, maybe also with other, with other colleagues in, in not a too distant future. I'm aware that you're quite busy and this is exceptional. So you don't, uh, don't fear, you won't get requests. Uh, at short notice, but we will try to plan something so that we can build really a presence online that can be a useful tool and a reference point uh, to all those that are facing these challenges. Fabrizia, thank you very much. And uh, let me just wrap up uh, again with more technicality. So we will share the presentations with you uh, in a wrap-up email that we will send uh, hopefully today or by the latest tomorrow morning. Uh, so you will have the presentations and all the links. And I also want to mention, as Annika already said, that we do similar uh, webinars with the Colby community. The next one is on Friday, uh, where we share best practices for, for, for teachers who want to teach remote coding. So please, you can join that as well on Friday at 11.30. Everything is on social media of codeweek.eu. And one last thing that I was mentioning at the beginning, but maybe I will re remind it, repeat it again, that um, the Digital Education Action Plan is, uh, is being updated in the commission and you can submit your contribution to this online survey uh, where we also shared the link earlier in the, in the chat. So thank you very much. We had uh, around 60, more than 60 participants. We are very happy that uh, that this webinar triggered such big interest. Thank you very much for taking your time to contribute. Thanks to all our speakers. I think this was really, these are really inspirational cases and, and really inspirational uh, initiatives. And thanks also to all of you who contributed in the chat. And uh, as Fabrizia said, you will hear from us very soon. Thank you very much, take care, and, uh, and uh, we wish you strength for all your actions and activities. Thank you.